Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Now there's a clash of forces in Chad following the appointment of Muhammad Derby to replace his late father, Idris Derby, as head of state. On one hand, are the military who wants General Kaka, as he's called, to oversee an 18-month transition government. On the other hand, are opposition parties who see the younger Derby's appointment, who's uh, about 37 years old, yep. as an institutional coup. There is also a Chadian rebel group based in Libya, which says it doesn't recognize General Kaka. The group, the Front for Change and Concord in Chad, says its fighters are already on their way to Chad. Now, joining us now to take a look at the security implications of this on West Africa and particularly Nigeria is Security and Current Affairs Analyst, uh, Mr. Katch Ononoju. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Mr. Ononoju, the situation in, in, in Chad right now is dire. Because, you know, we mentioned earlier that this is, you know, looking a lot like the Libyan story where, you know, a power vacuum, you know, starts to create a power struggle. But I want your comments on, you know, because Debbie had earlier spoken, you know, about this FACT, that they had been crushed, you know, from Libya. They had basically been defeated. But now that he's gone and uh, his son has been installed as the head of the Transitional Military Council, they're on their way leaving Libya now back into Chad. So would you say really that, you know, uh, Debbie's former statement of the FACT and other rebellion groups, rebellious groups being defeated was a political statement? Or would you say that, you know, it's just his death that's making them resurface now? Well, you know, what Chad is a keg of gunpowder. It's been mismanaged. Uh, Mr. Derby, having been in power for three decades, it's, uh, it was a dictatorship. He kept repeating himself. And now we have seen the final outcome of that that happens when dictators are in power. He left, and you have an implosion. Implosion in which members of the ruling junta are still in power. So. Whatever it is, there were conditions that were created as a consequence of his seat type policy, which is actually the cause of the crisis. I think that will still continue. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you looked at what happened, it's seen the members of the same clique, the same junta that are still in power. So those who are fighting Mr. Derby will continue to fight the new Mr. Derby. Okay. I think the region needs to move in to help that country heal, to start a transition that's inclusive, so that they can actually have proper democracy. What they have in charge since is not democracy. I remember there was a time President Abacha was paying salaries for the bureaucracy in charge just to keep Mr. Derby in power. Okay. Um, we should not allow that to continue. We should remove Derby as he's going on now and try to hold them accountable to transparent elections that are credible and allow the markets to continue their losing it up to become more inclusive of the aspirations of the majority of China. All right. The, the biggest concern really is uh, security. Uh, the emergence of these militia groups, even in Kenya, you know, we, we still every now and then still hear of Al Shabaab. Um, the uh, Boko Haram was one of the things that Idris Debi also, um, you know, with its, uh, his relationship with President Mohamed Buhari, had also assisted in the fight against Boko Haram. So what are the biggest concerns with regards security? Uh, in the past, remember, Libya was blamed and the death of uh, the Libyan leader then was blamed for, you know, the influx uh, of arms and ammunition into other parts of Africa. What is our biggest security challenge now that Idris Debi is dead? The challenge is like I told you before. They must start now to do those things that Mr. Idris Deby did not do. An inclusive power sharing system that carries more members of the Chadian society into consideration. Because the same people with guns are still the same people with guns. The faction that supported Mr. Deby are still in power. The faction that were fighting him are still fighting. So, since nothing has changed, you will continue to see the crisis. Let's not pretend as if 
uh, there was order. No, there wasn't order. There was an insurgency by those who felt out. Are there any of fears? He was very, very cooperative in the fight against Boko Haram and the other people he seen. But Chad was also not a stable society. You should understand that. What yeah. we must do now is to encourage an inclusive reform system that it's so inclusive that more members of the Chadian population should be brought in to governance. I think that's the way I, I foresee it going. Okay. Without yeah. that, improving on whatever it is they had at the time with Mr. Deb is the part to go. An inclusive system that agrees to organize power in such a way that more people, not just Mr. Debbie and his family. You know, he had a massive family, and the family's presence in Chadian government was very, very overwhelmed. Let us start the system that is inclusive, that carries more members of the Chadian society. That way, you can be able to start negotiating the end of the hostilities that have been on since from the time of Mr. Idris Debbie's being in power. Yeah, Not in the, 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 Mr. Nonju, the, the, um, what I'm trying to get is, if we fail to achieve some of all these things, because I think we all already all, always know what should be, what should happen. France and the uh, you know, um, international community have also stated what they believe should happen in Chad. But if we fail to achieve some of these, or if they fail to achieve some of these things, and there's a breakdown of law and order and complete chaos in Chad, is there fears that that might spill over into Nigeria and other countries? Nigeria already have more outbreak of law and order than any movement from Chad can bring. Now, where would you, Nigeria Northeast, Nigeria Northeast has been at war with the Boko Haram insurgency for a very long time, and Nigeria has not seen a way to do it. So I see nothing new. There's nothing new that will occur on that axis. Uh, all we need to do is to stabilize Chad by seizing this particular opportunity to impress on the ruling junta that they should lose enough. They should do more than Mr. Hissin Herbert did so that we can use this opportunity to actually kill two birds by starting a process that should have started before now. For that to happen, we need Chad's international partners like France to come in, and the United States too can do something about this. Let them come in and let us start the process there. You also need to have a relaxation of the dictatorship all across the Sahel. So yes, let us see this opportunity and start to tell Mr. Harvey's, Mr. Davis <coughs> people who are now in power to start the process of inclusion right now. Okay, Mr. Nonoju, your points are, are well noted. You know, the, the issues really is that, first of all, the foundations of government and politics in Chad was faulty. He's been ruling for over, over three decades, since 1990, basically extending constitutions just so he can remain in power, you know, since, since, since that year, 1990, like I mentioned. And then that transitional military council, you know, handed over power to his son. And I have a statement here from the spokesman for the Front for Change and Concord in Chad, FACT. And he's saying that Chad is not a monarchy, that there can be no dynastic devolution of power in the country, and that they're going to basically resist this and resist the installation of uh, Muhammad as, you know, transitional ruler of Chad. So in light of what you've been saying, you know, that Chad uh, dictatorship should be neutralized or relaxed in Africa, would you say that the FACT is justified in their move? Okay, we would uh, apologize for that, first of all. Sorry about the network uh, connection. We'll try to get back, Mr. Uh, Onono, during the conversation. But we really need to ask, you know, dictatorship really is a big challenge. Idris Jebi was one of the longest serving presidents, you know, leaders in Africa, ruling since 1990. That's terrible. That shouldn't be done for his sixth term, you know. So good to know we have Mr. Anonoju back, to, just to get perspectives as to where we stand right now. Mr. Anonoju, are, are you here with us? Yes, I, yes, I, I'm, I'm here with you. Okay, um, did you get my question the other time? Yes, the question, that's what I'm telling you. The important thing, as you started, as you stated, Chad is not a monarchy, and Chad should not be a monarchy. 
instability in any part of the sub-Saharan Africa structure is a threat to stability everywhere else. We should see this opportunity to now tell the junta who have taken power and who are very likely to justify everything that they have done because for them, uh, what has been there for the past 31 years is normal. It's not normal. We must now nudge them towards an inclusive arrangement where a broader membership of the Chadian society are now allowed to come into power. If you do not do this, you're going to continue to have the underlying uh, disruptions that were there during the time of Mr. Idris Derby and will continue to be there if you do not negotiate inclusion of a broader membership of the society into power sharing. Okay, right. so Mr. Anonuju, staying with the security situation, because what we've seen right now, we've seen pictures, you know, in, in Jemina Chad of, you know, the military basically on the streets. It seems like, you know, the, the country is becoming militarized because of the threat of, you know, the FACT coming into the country from Libya. But in the case that this breaks out into a conflict, right? Looking at the reputation of the Chadian army, we know how they've been involved in UN missions in Mali. We know how they've been involved in assignments in, you know, as far as Burkina Faso in Niger, how they've also collaborated with Nigeria to tackle Boko Haram. So looking at the, the reputation of the Chadian army, if this eventually breaks out into a crisis, do you think that they have the capacity to actually, you know, quell the rebellion from Boko Haram, FACT, and other insurgent groups? Yes. They have had capacity to fend off the insurgents. Uh, where the problem will come is when they have division internally. Uh, because don't forget, he was killed uh, just a day after he had won another uh, never ending term. Mm -hmm. So if they're able to negotiate internally amongst even members of the junta to agree on how to move forward, because you removed Mr. Idris Derby. You replace him with his son, it is the status quo. All you've simply done is push rhetorics to maintain the status quo. So you need a more inclusive society. That I believe is the only part towards progress in Chad and other places around the Sahel. You need now to start to impress it on that son of Idris Zebi that greater power share is necessary even amongst the members of the current junta that worked with Mr. Idris Dehbi. Okay. And then more members of the Chadian society because there was insurgency because of lack of inclusion. So it will not stop. The only problem you have is when the internal members of the current junta start squabbling among themselves okay. that this should not be a monarchy where a father leaves and then the son takes over. When they are able to arrest that internal problem, they will be able to deal with the external confrontations coming from the larger membership of the Chadian society. So, Nanaja, I would like you to also speak on the influence of the international community uh, that maybe has also assisted Idris Deby, or assisted him rather, to stay in government for uh, three decades. And what, do you, what role do you think that they should play um, uh, at a time like this? Uh, where do you think France you know, may want to come in here in order to achieve uh, a peaceful uh, Chad? That's why I call Chad. I mean, that's why I call France. France is the most uh, important in this. It's a very, very G3 uh, colonial power. It does not want any instability, not because it likes the society to become a good one, no. It does not want instability so that those that are in power will continue to play to its interests like puppets. That's, so we need to beg them to please allow stability, and then we will then from there ask for the progression, which will be the progressive inclusion of a larger percentage of the Chadian society. But yes, you have Chad on board. Yes, you need to reassure the United States that the cooperation that they got from Mr. Idris Derby will continue under the new circumstances. 
that will then calm them down, then you now look for internal inclusion before you now progress into expansion of power sharing in the larger Chadian society. I think that's the part to go. Yeah, but, but if, you, if you say, you know, they don't want crisis, they don't want uh, any chaos in Chad because it affects their interest, and at the same time, the FACT rebels uh, would like to see uh, um, um, Debbie's son out of that position. Um, how does that work then? Because if, if the rebels aren't going to allow Debbie and his family to continue to be in power, and at the same time, France seemingly would like that it continues as long as their interests are protected. How then do you, you know, put both uh, side by side? Well, that means uh, we have brought out the, the, the real crux of the matter in the center. A lot of people inside the current dictatorship and members of the society outside fighting with the rebels, they are all united in ending the monarchy of the Debbie family. That's where you will find a greater percentage of the Chadian society speak with unity. That is where I believe ultimately the whole people must work towards. But for now, the only way to stabilize the junta and avoid an implosion is to allow Mr. David's junta to have a relative iota of peace from which they can now work to understand that the greater Chadian society will not accept further. All right, oh, since the loss, Ms. Anna, just sadly enough. And uh, I think the most important thing we need to really focus and learn from the Chadian situation is what the standard of leadership should be in Africa. Because we see this dictatorship style, military style, you know, leadership across yeah. different African countries. And Ms. Anna, you can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you very okay. well. I said, finally, I wanted to get your thoughts on what the standard of leadership should be in Africa. Because we've seen the situation play itself, you know, time and time again, when, you know, presidents stay beyond their term, they extend the constitution, you know, just so they can stay in power beyond the tenor. You know, this dictatorship style thing, this monarchical military style leadership. But what should the standard be for African leadership going forward? The standard should be democracy all the way. Uh, Africa is a plural society and the very diverse communities. The democracy is not perfect, but it's the system that assures the maximum inclusion of the largest number of the population. So uh, all over Africa, we should strive for democracy. The sit tight strategy you saw uh, Mr. Derby uh, enjoy was very bad for Africa, was very bad for Chad. He actually damaged society. If you had allowed for democracy to continue, that would have been a very good thing. You can see uh, what he did is what you see our people try to mimic in some parts of the Sahel. And I think that should be stopped. Uh, so the started of the institutionalization of secure environment and peaceful society in charge will also help the rest of people across the area where Chad does exist. Right. It is very important that Africa embraces and stays in an inclusive democratic system. I think that's the very best uh, right now. Okay. We do not have anything that compares to an inclusive democratic society. All right. Kacha Nodjuju, uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks thank for you. speaking with us. Uh, we'd like to thank speak you with you again. You're welcome. All right, stay with us. Uh, still here on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we're bringing a conversation down here to Nigeria. Uh, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, is once again on the front burner, as he has been in the last one week. Uh, we're speaking next with uh, two persons to share their views on new revelations from the past of Visa Pantami. We'll be back. <laughs>